credit default swaps easily explained. The meaning credit default swap, also called CDS, explains the financial product quite well. It is a financial product based on credits, so on lending money to someone else. It deals with the default of credits, so credits that are not paid back. And it's a swap, so the exchange of cash flows. Since this explanation is probably not very clear, I will explain it to you more detailed. Imagine that you own a house, so it is yours. However, you also bear the risk that if the house gets destroyed, for example it burns down, since one normally sleeps better when not bearing this risk, people go to an insurance and insure their house against fire, storms, etc. So one still owns the house, but the risk of destruction bears the insurance. However, the insurance does not bear this risk for free. Instead, the house owner pays a regular insurance fee and receives security in return. A credit default swap is very similar. You have a CDS buyer who gave credit to the reference borrower. So the CDS buyer bears the risk of default. This risk is compensated with an interest, which the CDS buyer receives for granting the credit. However, if the CDS buyer does not want to bear that risk, he can make a credit default swap with the CDS seller. The credit default swap gives the CDS seller the obligation to pay the insured sum to the CDS buyer. So the insured sum can also be larger or smaller than the actual credit the CDS buyer granted to the reference borrower. Since the CDS seller does not bear the risk for free, he receives a running spread from the CDS buyer, which is the same as the insurance fee in an insurance contract. Now the situation looks like the insured house. So you grant a credit to someone else, but the risk is carried by someone else. A CDS can end in two ways. The reference borrower can either default or not. Pretty much like an insured house, it either burns down or it doesn't. In case nothing happens, the CDS ends and the CDS buyer carries again the risk of the credit or the credit is paid back. Thus, all that really happened is that the CDS seller received the running spread, which he can keep. The other option is that the credit defaults, so the reference borrower is unable to pay the credit back. Then the CDS seller pays the CDS buyer the guaranteed sum, which ensured the credit default swap. In return, the CDS seller receives the defaulted credit, so he could sue the reference borrower, etc. Credit default swaps have two major uses. The one as previously described is hedging so to protect from risks. The other use is speculation. Imagine you have a fire insurance, but not for your house, but for your neighbor's house. Thus, you will get a lot of money if your neighbor's house burns down, although you do not suffer any damages if it burns down. Same can be done with a credit default swap. If you buy a credit default swap for a credit that you did not grant to anybody, then you speculate on the default of a reference borrower. Concluding a credit default swap is a way of transferring the risk of a credit or bond without transferring the financial product. Moreover, it is an excellent way of speculation. Thanks for watching the video. If you got more interest in finance and want to support us, feel free to like the video and click the subscribe button.